OTAN, Outreach and Technical Assistance Network. Um, so we're the uh, Eastside Adult Education. This is our project update. We are from San Jose um, and the east side of San Jose. And this is some of the results of our adventurous journey. But first, I know you have cell phones. Please scan this code. Also, if you are unable to scan, like maybe your cell phone is not cooperating, I do have a website and a code number that you can pop in. Ooh. All right, I'm going to switch. Five, four, three, two, one. Don't worry, I got you covered because we can just use uh, a code here. So this is Mentimeter, if anyone is wondering. Oh, some of you have already, <laughs> already put your choice of drink. So we have a lot of people drinking water, some coffee. Where's the alcohol? Someone put alcohol in there. Oh, okay, okay. There's a that's from my time. <laughs> Red, there's the red wine. What is your purple drink? <laughs> Alrighty, we even have some lemon. I knew there would be someone in the audience that said tequila. <laughs> so most of our audience members and those on Zoom as well picked mostly water and coffee. So water and coffee is the most, you know this because it's the biggest size. All right, but bigger does not always mean bigger. <clears throat> <laughs> so, sorry, is that inappropriate? We can cut that out, right? No, oh, no. What are these called? What are these called? Without looking at Google, if possible. Hmm. Uh huh. Apparently, everyone knows what these are called. Yeah. This is something I had to look up yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Porter was there. <laughs> so you used Google. I did use Google. And I also had Renee and Dr. Porter. <laughs> All righty, guys. So the correct answer is spokes. Like a spokes in a bicycle. So you're probably wondering, why are we using it, an umbrella? It's part of our analogy here. Um, and yes, I am an English teacher. So <laughs> we have a big umbrella goal at Eastside Adult Ed. And our big umbrella goal is that our team will provide Eastside Adult Education with technology through online or blended teaching. So here are the umbrella spokes. We have our big umbrella goal here. Um, our big umbrella spokes includes Michael, who is doing Canvas and North Star. Michael. And uh, Michelle will be doing the training for teachers for the blended learning model. And I am going to be doing the technology access. So this covers that big umbrella goal of providing our school with technology integration. It takes the three of us to individually work together and as a team to work together for this umbrella goal. So the uh, school-wide support here that I'm doing is um, through website or video. So when you have training, you want to make sure that your, your audience leaves with some sort of job aid. And one of our job aids is going to be a website video. So short little videos um, and it says shorter and unpaid because it's a job aid, maybe three minutes worth of uh, sorry, of um, training materials so that if a teacher did training on edgenuity, for example, 
then they could go back onto the website, access for all the teachers, easy access. They could go back to that video and uh, kind of review what they learned for that training. <coughs> for longer, paid, an hour or longer, professional development, that will be put on Canvas. Where's Ava? I'm looking at you, Ava. <laughs> so um, the Canvas PD will include uh, professional development training that our supervisors do, meetings, first day of school meetings, mid-meetings, or if you have a trainer come in and, for example, show you how to uh, integrate something into your curriculum. Usually those are longer than an hour, so they would not be able to fit on a website with a shorter video from YouTube or something. So a Canvas um, shell, I guess, would be able to hold that professional development training. And uh, for, for me, what I'm using is I'm taking bits and pieces, I'm cutting those, that video training into smaller steps using Adobe Captivate. Yes, thank you. So this is, um, this is one of the modules that I created a couple years back. It's on andragogy because we teach adults. We treat our students like adults and not children because they have responsibilities and whatnot. So uh, these modules have a progression in which they have a, a bit, in, uh, sorry, they have um, some sort of lecture, for example, principle one of andragogy, and then they would have a knowledge check. One of the things that our supervisors want and our director wants is to show that the teachers actively participating in order to receive professional development extra duty monies. So to show that and to show proof that our teachers did go through the training and participated actively, I'm using the uh, quiz section or a, a quiz from Canvas to show a knowledge check. And it's a, it's a quick knowledge check what they learned for the previous principle. And that goes on in the pattern. You have principle two, knowledge check. Principle three, knowledge check. I do have this ready to go, but I think I would like to let my members, uh, my team members also present there. So if we have time at the very end, I could show you a quick snippet of what this module looks like. All right, so next up is Michelle. She also wants you to do a poll. Hi everyone, I'm Michelle. Uh, so here, another uh, QR code for you to scan. So there are two questions for you to answer. So can they see the question or They no? have to scan it first. Oh, yeah, scan and then can they mm -hmm. will see the question. Right? Mm -hmm. All right, so please submit your answer to those two questions. Is there um, age group required? Yes. Okay, great. All right, so I think um, most of you answered to how many active students are currently enrolled at Eastside Adult Ed. So I think 17 people chose uh, 1,000 to 3,099 uh, students. So let's check the correct answer. Oh, it's still loading. Still loading? Still loading. There we go. Yay! Wow. Who's that person? Chose more than 4,000. <laughs> great, 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 great. Yeah, so we have more than 4,000 students. Wow. Uh, in the year of 2000, in this school year. School year. All right, so that's for the whole program. All right, then let's go to the next question. What's the largest department at Eastside Adult Ed? 
So please submit your answer. <laughs> so what would <laughs> did we <I> say? <laughs> <laughs> Good thing it's anonymous. <laughs> yeah, the correct answer ESL. So we are right in uh, the middle of Silicon Valley. We're in San Jose. So we're uh, next to uh, many high tech companies, but the largest department in our school is ESL. So we're many, many people want to learn English, and then they are all new immigrants. So um, let me introduce myself first. I'm Michelle Chang. I am uh, the ESL uh, curriculum chair at Eastside uh, Adult Education. And I'm in charge of uh, um, ESL curriculum, uh, EL civics, and then uh, professional development, uh, teaching resources. And now I'm a DLACER, very proud. Um, so um, Eastside Adult Education is the largest adult school in our consortium. And uh, uh, so for this school year, there are more than 4,800 active enrolled students. And then uh, ESL serve as the largest department in our school. So uh, for ESL students, we have uh, thir more than 3,300 students so far. And then, um, yes, we are big in terms of uh, student population, but we are making baby steps in terms of uh, integrating technology in teaching. So that's why I'm here. Um, so um, let me show you um, the lesson plan that our uh, ESL teachers are using. So we're following um, WIPIA model. I think you're pretty familiar with that. So let me just uh, show it real quickly. Okay, so for our ESL department, we're following um, the model. So start with warm up. So this is for three hour, um, lessons then introduction presentation practice evaluation and assessment okay so this is VP. so we take the first letter of each word right so all of esl teachers follow this model for now okay but um we are proposing um a new learning plan new a new uh, lesson plan with blended learning model so the new, uh, the revised lesson plan will be like this. It starts with warm up and review and introduction and presentation. So same, right, as the traditional uh, lesson planning model. And then we're gonna change practice part to online, okay? And evaluation part to online as well and assessment part to online. All right, so the reason we wanna do this because Teacher create the material for practice evaluation assessment so students can um, do this part on their own in their free time. Then our teacher will be able to have some time available for other things. So they can have time uh, to do uh, collaboration. They ha can have time to create their lessons and then put it online <coughs> for students to access. Right, so, um, so with this model, blended learning model, teacher has um, more options and the student will have more options as well all right and here is the comparison of current class setting and the blended learning setting right now uh five days a week monday to friday our student and our teacher stay in the classroom okay for five days three hours each day right and with the new blended learning model um we're proposing to uh, change friday uh to a synchronous online lesson okay so uh student don't need to come to school on Friday. They can stay home. And then they have the access to the lessons. And then uh, they can do it anywhere. And then they can even do it over the weekend. Right? So when they return on uh, the following Monday, they need to submit their assignment. Right? So teacher um, can um, evaluate their work okay, when they come back. So then on Friday, within the, uh, with the three hours on Friday, teacher can use the time here 
and then to do collaboration because that's one of our vast growing uh, growth area. Uh, we want to have time to collaborate with our peers, but we couldn't find the time. Now with this new model, we finally have time to do it. Right? Okay, next one. This is the the pie graph, uh, pie chart um, of our ESL classes by level. All right. So as you can see that. Um, uh, like more than half of our students are in low level, so from pre lit to beginning high, mm -hmm. right? And then um, we offer forty six ESL classes so far, right? And then um, so uh, we tailor and differentiated the curriculum and the lesson to suit our students' language levels and their needs of using technology of learning. Okay. All right, the last one. Our biggest barrier is our teacher. <laughs> <laughs> Not our students. <laughs> Not the resources. All right. All right. It's our teacher. All right. So, um, how we will help our teachers? Right. So, we're going to adopt digital literacy in the ESL curriculum officially. Okay. And then uh, we're going to create a Chromebook user guide for our students. Uh, we're gonna create some lessons for typing and keyboarding. Uh, we're gonna create more lessons about Gmail and Google Doc, okay? And then we're gonna get oh, 10 trainings, all right, for Google Apps, blended learning models, triple E, and et cetera, okay? And then uh, one last thing is we're gonna continue uh, provide training uh, on Canvas and North Star to our teachers. All right, so that part's Michael's part. All right, thank you. <laughs> Okay, so I would give you just a quick run through what we've been, uh, some accomplishments to date. Uh, we got onto North Star just about a month ago, but I'm gonna take a quick walk through. I've been using it myself in my own classroom, and hopefully we're we'll gonna be expanding it. And then I'll give you a quick look at what we've been doing in Canvas. We've been in Canvas for a couple of years now, but it's been a slow, uh, slow advancement. I became our Canvas admin uh, earlier this semester. And then if there's time, I'd like to say a few things about some of the lessons learned from Ideal 101, but I may just weave them in as we go. So if you're not familiar with North Star, a couple things, ease of use, it's really actually quite easy to use. I think people can pick it up really quite, um, quite easily. I went to just a couple of online trainings, but really just dive in and, and use it. A Couple of ways that I've used it already, EL Civics, uh, over the winter, our, our assessment was you had to, the students had to write an email to a, to a doctor so we went through that particular, um, the email unit in North Star, just to help them out with that. Writing assessments, we just had our final writing test. Uh, I like to use Google Docs. I teach advanced low in the morning in person. Um, so a lot of the students don't know how to use Google Docs too well, so we use that in particular. And then there's a loads of life skills. And then the data, as, as you'll see, is, is copious. This is some of what North Star offers, essential computer skills. So again, I used email and Windows recently email we actually if you don't even have you don't even have to pilot North Star if you just want to try it out Google North Star digital literacy you can get it right in there and take some of the assessments what you don't have is the lessons and that's really part of the great thing about it all these pre-made lessons the student goes in they take an assessment they get immediate feedback and they can go and then just click on the ones that they missed and go directly into a lesson so it's really really quite nice this is just some of the things they offer then they get more specific uh, again, Google Docs is one that we've used a lot, and then MS Word a little bit. <clears throat> this is the student dashboard, so they, they would go in and click on Take Assessment, and then they can go into Lessons, they can see what they've already done. These are some of the other life skills, your digital footprint, social media, all sorts of things. So it's, it's, there's a lot to it. Again, lots of data, what have they done? This then goes through. You know, it shows some of our passing rates, like for MS Word, I had 10 students do it in my class, only four passed. With Docs, 11, only three passed. But they really weren't frustrated. You know, it, it was, everyone wanted to learn. It's relatively easy to use. You get right into the lessons. So it wasn't a sense of failure at all. It was really like, you know, this is what we need. So I've been really enthusiastic about it. You know, Canvas is a bit of a slog. North Star is, it's, it's you know, a lot of fun. You dig even deeper, now you can see exactly what they've gotten. This, this was in the doc, so which questions do they get right, which questions do they get wrong. Down at the bottom, then you can click into specific questions. 
and it'll open up. This is actually the interface that they would actually take the test in. And for this one, you know, the task at the top left there, open a new Google Doc. As you can see, they're in an email, so they need to figure out, well, I need to click on that to get over to Docs, step by step. So it's really quite nice. You know, Canvas, that's our growth uh, over the course of a couple of years. Uh, we're running out of time. You can, if you have any questions, I can, I've got, there's all sorts of data you can get. Um, this is just interactions with Canvas. Blue is, the, the darker blue is participation, when they actually do something. So there's a lot of people just looking at, you know, there's a lot of teachers just, just posting files and, and uh, there isn't always as much interaction as we might like. If you have any questions, you can head over. I'll keep talking until somebody comes over to ask some questions. <laughs> Again, I mean, you need to be careful about your statistics. I mean, I showed you the one graph that was, was rising. We made it look pretty good, like we're making slow progress. But you can get incredible, this is in analytics, they call it, or new analytics. And you know, it can get pretty bad. Uh, courses where 60% of students have no activity in the last seven days. 96% of 67 courses. So we don't actually have 67 courses open, so you need to be careful about how you select it. Canvas works really well on a semester basis. Um, but you, yeah, so again, more, more kind of discouraging statistics. Students with no activity in the last 30 days, 79% of 726 enrolled students. But we only have 500 licenses, so we don't actually have 726 students enrolled. So again, you do need to be careful about how you select the, um, the data. But if you're a teacher, not an administrator, you should notice like down here are teachers' names. So the administration knows exactly what's going on. And they know how you're using it, they know what you're using it for. Um, so you better use, <laughs> better use it. Uh, this is for initial training. This is one that we've used. Uh, one, one plan for the future, I'd like to improve it, add it a bit. It really just adds a few, um, it really just links you out to instructor videos uh, made by the company. 